Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome back to Tranquility Du Jour, nourishing conversations about living a full and meaningful life with doses of tranquility. This is episode 573. And it's my annual year in review. So I'm excited to share this with you as my pug snores in the background. Clearly very excited about this episode. So I'm your host, Kimberly Wilson, bringing you tranquility through this podcast since 2005. So I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful holiday and that you are gearing up for this new year. So, you know, the one thing I want to remind you is if you have not sorted everything out, meaning your year's dreams, your word or theme of the year, you know, your 2021 review, it's okay, right? It's not like something magical happens if you do this on the twin, you know, on December 31st, right? If you get it all figured out before midnight. So, you know, let this kind of percolate and settle in as I'm doing with the word and theme of the year, which I'll mention in a moment. But, you know, I just want to encourage you to take some pressure off if you find like, I haven't had time to do this or I haven't figured it out. It's early still. So, you know, coming back after the unstructured time that many people had between uh, Christmas and then the new year, you know, it, it takes a while. So many people that I spoke to last week were like, I don't even know what day or time it is, you know, just so disoriented. So, you know, with this episode, my hope is to give you some inspiration as you think about your year in review, to share a little bit about mine, a few of my challenges, a few of my wins, and what's in store for 2022, this brand new year. Now, if you haven't hit the subscribe button in your favorite podcast app, please do so. And also, I have links in the show notes, which can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash 573 to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon. So depending on, you know, if you have a favorite that you would like to subscribe with. Also, anyone who is new to Tranquility Du Jour, hello, 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 a big welcome. And you can learn more at KimberlyWilson.com slash new. Two things I want to mention before I dive in is the Coterie, which is my year-long program. The doors are closing to this in two days. So if you would like to join us, we'd love to have you and you can apply at KimberlyWilson.com slash Coterie. And the reason I'm having people apply, I just want to make sure that it's a good fit for you and that this feels like your intentions and goals will be met through the Coterie. So I would love and I and I definitely invite you to take a moment to head on over there to learn a bit more about the program. And I will say I'm blown away by the people who are joining us this year. It's such an amazing group. And I feel like I say that with every year because every year the group is amazing. And the majority of people from last year will be joining us this year. And then the new additions (coughs) are pretty freaking amazing too. So If you would like to be with an amazing group of like-hearted souls, I invite you to apply. And again, you have two days because the cart will close, meaning the availability, the chance to join us closes on Wednesday. There will be a wait list then put up and you will have the opportunity to apply and join again next December or this December, I guess we should say, because we are now in 2022. Also, if you missed... Oh my gosh, my dog is so snorry. If you missed the New Year's virtual retreat, well, we missed you. And you can grab the replay. There's a link to that in the show notes. So you basically, you just would go in, purchase the New Year's virtual retreat. It will take you to a page that gives you everything you need to retreat on your own terms at your own time. You want to set aside one hour for the first module, which is flow, yoga, and meditation, and then two hours for the module two, which is reflect, and module three, which is create. So basically three hour retreats, all via video, again, that you can do at your own pace. So I encourage you to check that out if you would like to start the new year with intention and know that there is no like 
rule that says you have to, you know, have everything sorted out by now or even by the end of the month or in February, right? So give yourself time and space to really dive into all of this. Now, what I want to share with you is my year in review, which I just posted over on the blog, KimberlyWilson.com slash blog, and I will also put a link to it in the show notes. So during the virtual retreat that I led on, gosh, when was that? Saturday, everything again feels like a bit of a blur. You know, I did the journaling prompts along with the group. And I had also already created a draft of my year in review to share with you because I'd hoped to get it out last week and it just didn't happen, which is totally fine. And I have it for you now and I've enhanced it and added to it. And the thing that I encourage you, if you're going to be doing a year in review, if you find this practice useful, helpful, is to consider your 2021 list, meaning what goes on your list, right, for the experiences you had, uh, the people you met, the things that you did, and look for patterns, wins, challenges, boundaries, and those sweet moments in between. So I know this year took a big toll on all of our mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, financial kind of health, right? It's um, with the global pandemic, this is ongoing. But you may just surprise yourself whenever you sit down and really compile your own list. What were your experiences of 2021? What are some things you're really proud of? What are some areas where you really struggled? And I'm not going to go through my full list because it's written out for you and available on the blog if you would like to read it in detail. But I'll just share a few things that really kind of stand out to me. So one exciting thing is that I started point lessons. I believe it was in mid, maybe it was mid-November. And also that really, you know, so we did it for, I've done it for about two months now. It was really a big highlight because when I started ballet again regularly in 2018, actually January, so this is my four-year anniversary of being back to ballet somewhat regularly, really regular during the pandemic, you know, my goal was always to get on point. And yet, Many places don't offer this for adults because, you know, probably liability issues. So I found a wonderful teacher who is out of St. Louis and who does it virtually. And so, and she's a former professional dancer, really, really great, Vitality Ballet, if you're interested in finding her on Instagram. So that was really, really a highlight, getting my getting fitted for my point shoes. And then I also bought Dimmy point shoes, which means it doesn't have the shank, which is that hard thing in the soul that keeps you upright. So it has a flexible shank so you can practice your point work at the bar in like a blend between a belly slipper and a point shoe. So I got both of those shoes and really love working in them. Again, so freaking incredibly challenging, but there's something about it that I really, really enjoy. And, and struggle with. Um, I got to take two trips to Oklahoma, which was a delight. So once I had my second vaccination scheduled, I got a trip to Oklahoma on the books and I was back late April, early May, which was a total treat. And then I went back a couple weeks ago too in December to have a few days with my parents over the holiday. Also, I was able to get up to New York City. And what's crazy is the timing. So I got to New York City mid-July and, you know, was at a, um, you know, two jazz shows, right, where, you know, people are eating, drinking without masks, of course, um, because they're eating, drinking. And, uh, you know, and then after that, Delta became this really big thing. And, you know, it, it's kind of skyrocketed and things began to change. And then I was there the second weekend in December, which... <laughs> is crazy because that weekend, New York City, massive surge. Thank goodness me and my friend did not get it. And um, ever since then, you know, New York City, like Broadway, a lot of stuff has had to close due to COVID cases, you know, among performers or whatnot. So we got in the very last weekend that, you know, everything was that, you know, had been open was open. 
And so Phil's so lucky. I mean, what are the chances? And even, you know, got to go to Lincoln Center, right, to see the Nutcracker. And I believe that was shut down for a little while after my visit, you know, within the next week or two because of Omicron. So, I mean, feel so lucky with regard to timing for those. Tim and I, my partner, celebrated 17 years last January. So we have our 18-year anniversary coming up this January. Moved into a new office space, and that was really nice because I moved out of my office space that I just adored in August of 2020 and had my office furniture and whatnot in a storage area, which I never, ever wanted to get a storage area because, you know, I know a lot of people can just keep things that they don't use in storage areas for years, and I I just didn't want to be that person, but I also didn't want to part without furniture and I didn't have space for it in my Tony home. And so, you know, I did that for a year and then I moved into my new space in end of July, right before the Delta uh, spike. But, you know, that's been really nice to have. And I'm seeing maybe just 10 to 15% of my clients in person. Most are still virtual. But having that space, I think, is really, really important for the therapeutic alliance. So really happy to be back in there. You know, one other piece that was uh, really good that I'm proud of is I finished my first draft of the memoir. And that was last spring. And so my hope, my plan, my assignment is to get an updated draft to my writing coach, Jamie Cat Callen, by February 1st, because she had gone through and of course wrote notes and all the margins and whatnot in my first draft. And then I need to go through and incorporate those and things we've been working on over the past many months and get that uploaded. One major loss and really has devastated us for the past many months was losing our beloved Belle Star. So she is the pug that we took to Paris twice. We adopted her from Homeward Bound Pug Rescue in July of 2016 and had her until August of 2021. And she was just the sweetest girl who was so devoted to Tim. I mean, if he got up to go to the bathroom, she would like panic and like start looking around and then jump and try to go follow him. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous. She was like his little shadow. And so, you know, losing her so unexpectedly, she's great one day and gone the next. It's just been really, really heartbreaking. So that was a massive, massive loss for us in 2021. You know, we got to see a few concerts, Pink Martini, Harry Connick Jr., Alanis, Garbage. I went to multiple live jazz shows, which was such a treat. You know, and what's funny, too, is I tried to total up, at least in my head, knowing how many snail mail love notes that I had sent. And I think it was about 350-ish last year, which is insane. But I sent snail mail about four times to my annual pass holders. And I'll be doing the same to my coterie group. And, you know, in addition to that, probably a 100 more, you know, thank you notes or thinking of you notes over the year. So that's kind of a, a rough outline, you know, of 2021. The other big thing that happened for me was I, um, <laughs> I took a little bit of a step back a little bit before we lost Bell. Really, whenever I got back from that road trip, which I failed to mention, which was a massive highlight. And I know some of you followed along because we did four blog posts about it. But, you know, whenever I got back from that, I just found myself, you know, the dust settling after being on the road for so long. And uh, I just was not like as active on social. I kind of stopped sending love notes. And it wasn't really a conscious decision, but I just was starting to feel like I need some rejuvenation. I need some, I need a pause, right, to do some reevaluation. And so after that, or during that, really, you know, we lost Bell Star, which of course, like sent me into, you know, a much longer sort of uh, break. And, you know, what came out of that was a decision to let go of, as many of you know, because I've talked about this and shared this with you before really anyone else was letting go of the TDJ Lives, the seasonal events I've been doing for about 15 years. I stopped the book club. 
And I've decided to let go of in-person, you know, national and international retreats, which was kind of a decision that came out a lot of 2020. But I did have one scheduled for 2022 in Italy. And I got in touch with the retreat director. And I was just like, I'm, I think I'm done with these. She was so gracious about it. So, you know, it's that's these are some pretty big changes for me because I'm quite regimented. When I start something, I, I keep with it for like a year, such as this podcast. Another thing, too, is a podcast I'm going to be going to every other week. That's the plan. So once a month, you're going to hear from me, such as this podcast. And then once a month, you're going to hear from a guest. So that's the plan. I haven't fully crystallized it, but that's what I'm thinking for 2022. So you're really doing a lot of just, you know, reflection, I think was a big, big piece that came out of 2021. And so, you know, in the blog post, I also shared some of the journal prompts that I gave the ladies and gents in the virtual retreat on Saturday. And the questions are, what worked well for me in 2021? What didn't work for me in 2021? What did I learn about myself last year? And how did my goals for the year unfold? And then I also share a few of my year's dreams. So I'll share a few of these with you and you can read the rest, you know, in the blog post if you're interested. And again, I like to, of course, I put these into my journal, but I also like to share them with you. It feels like a sense of accountability. It gives you an inside peek into, you know, my challenges, what's going on in my life, um, you know, a little bit uh, really behind the scenes, right? So for 2022, and this is a, a fraction of them, because I'm sure I will add more, but this is just kind of the off the cuff list is getting a memoir proposal to my agent, hip surgery, and I'm surviving on cortisone shots and anti-inflammatories. I had the surgery scheduled for Memorial Day weekend last year and instead decided to go on a five and a half week road trip. So I postponed it and I'm just hoping to manage it with these cortisone shots, etc. But I do think I'm going to need to have this later in the year. I want to get through a performance, a little recital that I'm doing in Miami mid-year, which I'll mention in a moment. Definitely healthy pugs. You know, Gizmo's been having some issues lately. He's 14. We adopted him four years ago, and I'm kind of obsessed with this dog. And then Mookie, he's doing good. He's the one who's snoring loudly over on the couch. And, you know, he had surgery in December. So, you know, my wish really, of course, and this is beyond my control, mostly is healthy pugs. Uh, A few other things is increased color on my plate, right? So getting a lot more veggies in my system. Learning and performing the Lilac Fairy in Miami. So through Broche Ballet, which is a company out of Denver, she's hosting like a kind of a conference, a ballet conference for adults in Miami mid-year. And then you could sign up to also perform. And so I worked with my private teacher out of New York that I've been working with for a little over, I guess, a year and a half now. And he choreographed the piece for me. And it's just like two minutes. And um, so, you know, learning that, practicing that and performing that really excited. I'd like to progress to point in the center. Right now, I am gripping the bar desperately (laughs) in my point bar classes. Um... You know, definitely, I want to nurture my coterie group. We've had a couple events so far. They're absolutely amazing. And one big thing is trying to incorporate more play and relaxation time into my life. I realized, I think it was, yeah, Sunday morning, whenever I woke up, the past, well, the past month, but definitely like the past week, I had been, you know, through the holidays, even though I took that week off from clients, I had many, many things scheduled, including daily ballet, and was basically, you know, in some ways for the coterie experience working every day. And so when I woke up Sunday after my two events, right, Friday night, and then Saturday, the virtual retreat, and I woke up Sunday, I was like, ah, I just need to lie here for a while. And You know, having more of that downtime, I think, is really, really important and highly encouraged. I'd like to create a few micro courses. So if you have any suggestions on what you would like, let me know. And when I say micro, I just mean like a module or two, something light, but gives you 
a taste of something in a way that feels really good. So maybe something on one of the tenants, style, uh, compassion, creativity, mindfulness, wellness. Or, you know, I don't know, something else, right? I'm like, what else? I mean, there are many other ideas and topics. And so I definitely welcome anything that you would be interested in. Please just let me know. Kimberly at KimberlyWilson.com. Always love hearing from you. Um, morning writing time would be really great and simplifying the TDJ clothing options. So, you know, getting, um, moving out, retiring a few designs to make space for a few new ones, but retiring maybe like a third of them just to really open up space for new. And then I'm having a remodel done of my kitchen and bathroom in the new year, which is going to take place if all goes as planned, mid-January through mid-March, which means I will be living elsewhere for that time. And so I hope to do some pretty big decluttering for that because we have to pack everything up in those areas, which hold a lot of our stuff, right? I mean, think of what's in your freezer and your refrigerator or your pantry alone, plus pots, pans, etc. And then, um, you know, the bathroom, <laughs> my bathroom is filled with um, an abundance of toiletries because I for some reason, have like really gotten into face serums during the pandemic. So that's going to take a little bit, but I think it will also be helpful as we think about decluttering. So, you know, as I wrote here in my summary is overall 2021 is a fine year. It wasn't great. It wasn't the worst. But, um, you know, what I really tried to do and encourage you to the best of your ability is to focus on what you can control, right? Because with COVID, and really life in general, there's so much out of our control, and it can become really discombobulating and really frustrating. So what is it you have control over? Can you make just small shifts in that that will allow you to live life in a way that feels authentic to you? It feels good. It feels juicy. It feels helpful, right? And then I also have a bunch of resources that I came across that I thought you might enjoy, how to create your personal year-end review, um, how to make 2022 your best financial year yet. Are New Year's resolutions powerful or pointless? And then this was on CNN, and I loved it, was five science-backed strategies for nailing your New Year's resolutions. So I hope these are helpful and that this is somewhat inspiring as you think about your own year in review and what you want to see happen in 2022. And again, I just want to encourage you, if you are like, I don't know any of this yet, or I'm still trying to sort it out, that's fine. Sit with it, kind of marinate in it. Notice what you're drawn to, what images you're drawn to, what you're drawn to, articles, books, etc. And then just see, does something come out of that that really like hits you of like, ah, I've always wanted to do this, or I want to learn more about that, or I want to participate in this, you know, whatever it might be, just kind of listen, listen and trust your intuition and, and just see what is it trying to tell you as you think about this brand new year and all that is ahead. And I look forward to spending it with you through this podcast through Instagram, YouTube, I'll still do some occasional tea with Kimberly videos. I hope that you enjoy those. Also, there's links to check out my six books and planner. The planner is really great for launching your new year. And also year of tranquility is really wonderful because it takes you through a year looking at all these different topics, all these themes and different practices associated with them. And really, as I wrote that book in 2018, I really, really wanted to share all the tools that I found helpful and useful over the years as I do my best to shift from teaching tranquility to also really living and feeling more tranquility. You know, last week during a uh, tea date that I had with someone, a virtual tea date, you know, she was like, you always seem so busy like you have a lot on your plate, but yet, how, so how do you incorporate tranquility into that? And I was like, you know, what's beautiful about that is that is my definition of tran tranquility, right? Like having a full and meaningful life, finding a sense of calm within that, right? So it's not like, oh, I go on a yoga retreat, everything's great. It's like, no, how do you find tranquility among the busyness of everyday life and also make sure that you're making space for tranquil moments such as 
Time sitting down with a cup of tea. Time pinning snail mail. Time looking out the window. We got snow here in Washington, D.C. today, and it is stunning. It's so, so beautiful, right? So it's like taking pauses and moments for that, I think, is really where the tranquility ultimately comes from. Now, finally, uh, if you have a moment to share a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or any other platform, I'd be so, so grateful. And if you screenshot it and send it to me, I will be sure to send you a little thank you treat. All right. Well, thank you, ladies and gents, for tuning in today. I wish you a delicious, delightful year ahead, a really nice, fresh start to the year this week. And uh, I look forward to being in touch with you and connected throughout the year. Happy New Year and wishing you all good things.